Good. All right. So let me introduce myself. My name is Pascal. I'm actually a business development manager for North America. With me, I got Bartos, who is part of the implementation team and will take the technical portion of today's webinar. And I got Conrad Ras, VP of International Sales in, at XDRF. Right. Today's presentation, today's webinar target audience is for beginners, as the title mentions it. If you are a current client or if you've seen the application, you're still welcome to stay with us. Things may be redundant. Maybe you'll learn new stuff today. But other than that, we should be good to start. So uh, if you could click the, the next PowerPoint, next slide, please. All right, so on today's agenda, we will see the different core module. We'll go over it quite quickly. I want to stay eye level. I want to make sure that you get the information. We try to keep you entertained. All right, we'll also see customer portal, vendor portal throughout the presentation. I'll briefly talk about the different style we have in our system. We got two track, two, two angle. We got the classic angle. We got the smart project angle. This is really the one we will focus on today. And then we'll look at different aspects. So basically how to automate as much as possible with the system, how to apply workflow, the different ways we can use pooling. This is quite unique for, for our application in the market in there. Okay. So uh, Bartos, can you move to the application, please? All right, full screen, please. All right, so on this screen, what we see, we see on the left side, we see red panel, and we see on top, black panel. All right, the, black, the red panel are really the different module, car module that we have in the system. For starter, we got the dashboard. So in the dashboard uh, view, this is where you could set it, and this can be set by user. Right, so when you log in in the system, you need your credential. This system is hosted on the server. So as long as you have your credential, being a web-based application, you'll, you'll have access to it. You can have multiple user in the system and each can set this up to their own view, their own needs. For instance, if you are a manager in the company, you may want to bring focus to ongoing activities, to invoice, to quote. If you are a salesperson, you may want to focus on the CRM aspect. So you want to see the activity that you've done. You want to see your ongoing activity as well. So you could set that up by editing the dashboard, by going to add widget. So there's different option available for you. Very straightforward, very simple very dynamic as well. You could get the information you need, right? So from there, we'll go and we'll look at the other modules. So you got the opportunity. This is where you could see the information. You got the quotes. This is where you could create your quote, search for quotes that you've done. Project, this is where you will find all information related to project. You could create a new project directly from there. Clients, this is where you got your client record. Vendor as well, this is where you got your vendor's record. This is where you could go search for vendor, have a quick view of what's going on with your vendors, right? We see a fine example here. We could see all of our vendors, uh, avail availability, productivity, right? And then back to the red panel, we got, we got invoice, you know, that CRM, that's a very nice tool. We have a full CRM functionality, so you could track your activity. You could set up upcoming activities with reminders. So that's very good. And then you got report. Report is extremely, extremely powerful functionality in our system. The rule is simple. If the information is in the system, if it's in the database, you can pull a report on it. And if they're actually, we could even do more than that. If we forgot something, you guys can even create new tabs, right? And you, you can make these tabs available for report as well. Now we're looking, we see a bunch of reports that are out of the box available. So again, the rule is quite simple. 
if it's in this system, you could pull a report on it and you could put different dimension to this report. And on top of it, some report, most report can be emailed to you, time, date that you want. So for instance, if I'm a manager, I'm a project manager, I come in in the morning, we start at nine, I usually get to the office at 8.30, so I want an email to be sent by the system at eight o'clock with all ongoing project status. I get in, I get my coffee, I'm ready for my day, open my, my inbox, I got my reports, I got a snapshot. I could do that as well. Or I could I actually, while I'm driving to the office or commuting to the office, I could receive this. So I look at the report on my mobile device. All right. Now, if we go to the black side. So again, red, this is module. Black, this is really for action, direct action. So we got the search box. Search box, this is a very nice functionality. Well, in there, I could go in and I want to I want to go directly to a certain rec record. So let's say um, test vendor or things like that. I could go directly into it. I find I find all the information for it. I could click. I want to look at a certain customer. I got, just type in. I go directly to it. So kind of a quick way to get the information. And if you're not quite sure, you could type it and you see different results. So you could pick on those results. All right. Next, we got the add button. So basically, this is a quick way to start a project, add a client. Go, you go directly to there, so you don't need to go to the red side. And let's say for I want to add a client, go to client. You go right there, click add client, and then it, the system brings you directly to the, the right module. So kind of a shortcut. Beside it, beside it is one of our very important functionality. These are our alarm. Right, the system, you will put information in the system, you put task in the system. If anything goes wrong, if anything has not started on time, right, you could manage multiple projects at the same time. Well, the watchdog will basically notify you if a status is not met, not started, not finished on time, it will create an alarm. So you'll see right now we got 14, and it will also create a pop up as you see right now on the screen, giving you the information. Right, so this makes it that you could work on your project, you could give us your instruction, you could run project, move on to something else, and while the project goes on, we got your back over there to actually notify you if something went wrong or if something is accomplished. Next, we see the the clock. This are this is part of our timesheet time capture functionality. So you can actually say, well, right now I'm working on project management. This will, will make a timestamp and you can, all these information can be pulled into reports. So you could do this for your users, right? Beside is the other button beside is the help button. So you could go get information directly into it and, uh, Get they do a tour if ever you're not sure where it is, so you could do a tour as well. But guys, let's be honest, when you are using the system, you will be trained on the system. So a tour, you won't really have to do it. Anyway, you should have to do it if Bartos team does a good job, which usually they do. Next one is the gear wheel. In the gear wheel, this is the configuration. So this is where you can configure all the system. Now, you guys, as I just said, Bartos team will, will train you on the system, so you'll know it from head to toe. You'll know everything about it. But it's fair to say, maybe in six months from now, after you've done your implementation, you know there's a functionality that exists. You're not quite sure how to get there. You know, let's say I want to add categories in my system. So I'm not quite sure. I could go directly to search, type in categories, and the system will highlight it a little bit below. Then I click on it, and then I see my information. So this is a very neat simple way to go back to the information and then you could set it up, modify it. That's why it's under the gear wheel. Okay. Next button, well that's is basically the sign out button, the account button. This is where I go and modify my functionality. So we're very familiar with this. This is anywhere in the industry you got buttons like that. All right. So what we just did right now is we look at the bearings in the system. All right. One thing I didn't say at the beginning, I went a bit too fast. I was excited to start the webinar is that our application is a web based application, meaning that if you have your credential and it's installed 
on a server, you will have access to it. From there, depending on what type of credential or profile you have in the system, you'll be directed to the right portal. So what do I mean by that? We have the customer portal. This is where the customer go to create requests, send requests, request a quote, right? Quite simple. At the other end of the spectrum, we got the vendors portal. This is where the vendor would go to actually retrieve work, then uh, uh, upload his file, create his invoice at the end of the project. And in between, we got the project, project manager slash home portal. This is where you control all of the system. This is what we are basically logged in right now as a user. So to have access to all of these module, this view, you need to have a user access. Now, our licensing model is in line with our portal. So we got client license, we got resource license. These licenses are free and unlimited. The only thing we look at is the number of user license you need. And this is how we will create our, our quote and base the system on it, okay? Now, we will start the presentation of the smart project, but before we go into that, there is actually two track in the system. When you buy the system, you have access to both of them. You got the classic project angle track, and you got the smart project angle and track. The classic and the smart, what's really the difference? Well, to start with, 95% of your project will be done with the smart project, right? One view, one page, you go to it, project that are redone and project that are simple, project that are quick turnaround, smart project. You'll see it, everything in one page, you move forward. The classic project are, pro are project that you may have multiple source language, right? In, in smart project, one source, pro, one source language, multiple target language, it's not a problem. Classic, you could have multiple source, multiple target language as well. And project that require detail, um, detail phasing of the system of your project. You want to make sure that it's step by step by step. Well, this is classic project. But again, we've all been doing this for a long time and we know most of the project are pretty much, well, in most companies like that, pretty much the same. You got three to four scenario and these scenario are the one that always comes. So the smart project angle is the right way to go. Right, we will show you in a second. Bartos will take the floor and show you this project. Now, once Bartos is done with the what is part of the presentation, just let you go, you guys know, it will come back to me. We will open the floor for questions, and my colleague Conrad will help you with Bartos to answer those questions. Okay, so Bartos, please take the floor. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Pascal. As already introduced, I am the uh, part of the implementation group. Uh, we are the ones that held trainings in XTRF and we help people get familiar with XTRF uh, through uh, the implementation stage. So uh, to begin with, uh, Pascal already mentioned the customer portal. Uh, what I'm going to show you and start with is actually a quote request form. It's the a similar feature, but it's not uh, customer portal is dedicated to the uh, your client that you're already working with. But cold request form is for every single client that you find out there. Basically, anybody can come here and request a quote. It's a really neat feature. Uh, as you can see, you start with selecting a correct service. But this is, of course, from the, your client point of view. Select certain specialization languages in which we want to request a form. And of course, the most important file. After selecting of the file, XTRF can already present the estimated cost to your client and the word count. Uh, uh, scope of work and note is the additional fields in here. I will not fill them, but of course it's possible to add them. Uh, then we need to add the email address and the full name of the company, because as I've mentioned, this is the feature uh, targeted for new clients. So uh, we need to know how to contact you back. That's its full name, so it's my name and the company name, let's make it this way. After pressing request a quote, 
project manager or salesperson responsible for this quote will be notified automatically that there is a new quote waiting in the system. But I know that it's coming, so I can show it to, to uh, right to you right now. So let's go to the quotes module, the one that my Pascal already mentioned. And here on the top of the page, we can see there is a new quote waiting for us. Uh, I will. Uh, this is the how quote. As we can see, the client is the name that I inputted. Languages are here. So we can slowly start to add the uh, essential information in which we can then provide the quote to the client, to which we can then uh, respond uh, accordingly. So let's add offer expiration. Offer expiration is how many days your client has to accept the offer. Delivery date is when you expect this project to be finished. Volume is the uh, estimated number of words. It's really uh, important to make sure that the date, uh, dates of the jobs are set up uh, accordingly and, of course, uh, automatically based upon the vendor productivity. Then let's take a look through the process. We have just a translation in here. This is the number of jobs available files. We can see that the file that the customer added is visible in here and the finance parts. So I want to add receivables because, of course, this is really important for the quoting phase. But due to the fact that we have uh, <clears throat> added a memo queue integration with it, we don't really need to do anything. As soon as I create a project in memo queue, XTRF will do, will do this for me. So right after it will be finished, I'm already uh, ready to send a quote to, to my client and see whether uh, they accept it or not. Uh, creating project memo queue uh, can take up to 30 seconds usually. Uh, it takes less, depends on when do you create it. But right now it was already created. It's synchronizing all the information that I've added during the project creation. In that case, it's a quote phase. Let's take a look. It's still assigning uh, vendors. As you can see, it takes the correct uh, correct translation memory, correct uh, uh, all the correct resources, and creates bilingual file with a little more uh, too many details in here. Basically, all that is important for the uh, MemoQ project will be here. What, of course, is really important is the cost of the project. In that case, uh, we have total agreed. This receivable and the amount of it was created automatically simply because we create a project with the MemoQ integration. So what's left to do is just to send a quote. The quote confirmation button is on the right hand side. Let's just send it. So let's now let's switch roles again. Let's uh, pretend that I am the client that received the quote confirmation. This is the email that your client would receive in that particular case. All the details about the quote are here, all the essential things. Uh, one second. Uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, not exactly the the email. This is the email. Sorry. This quote. Once again, the, the previous email was the confirmation that I've actually requested the quote, but this one is for the confirmation. So I can accept or reject. In that case, I I, I agree. This price is reasonable. I think I can continue working with this company. The confirmation that the course has been accept accepted and there will be more contact coming soon is given to the client. And now we can go back to the home portal. So let me refresh the page. Of course, uh, refreshing in that case is really necessary because we are doing it in a uh, sort of a rush manner. But uh, in the real case scenario, you will not need to do this. Uh, the status of the quote is approved and the project was already created based upon the quote. So let's move to the project. What's really important is that all the information that you gathered during the quoting phase, so volume, the deadline, uh, files, uh, if you decided to assign vendors during the quote uh, phase, they also uh, are still assigned. So basically all the work can be done by now. You can already start the project, but let's see what is still necessary to do. We can see the languages. Of course, selecting of the vendor is one thing. Jobs are here. Files are still there. And take a look into the financial part. It's still looking correct. 
So basically, what's left to be done now is select the correct vendor. Uh, so when it comes to XTRF, there are basically three ways of doing that. You can just uh, uh, point to somebody and tell the vendor, okay, you are doing this job. But in that particular case, you would need to make sure that this vendor knows that uh, at this uh, uh, time, they need to be available for the translation or proofreading. The other two uh, things are uh, uh, involving job offers. So basically, the request for the job, so whether the vendor is available in that particular time or not. So here we have two possibilities. Uh, let's talk about vendors manually, this one first. So basically, uh, you open your whole uh, uh, database of vendors, which can be really huge in XTRF, and you decide that those 5, 10, 15, 20 vendors will receive the invitation right now. You add the time for the uh, deadline of the offer, and you send the invitation. Uh, but the one that we really like, the thing that is really makes the, all this workflow automated is the select vendors according to rule feature. You define the rule in which XTRF filters out those vendors. Uh, so first of all, you decide, so uh, I want to only uh, this time uh, off, send the offer to freelancers only. That's a kind of possibility. Of course, you can do it other way. It can be only in-house. It can be all, only uh, agencies. Then you define how many vendors per how many cascade they should XTRF should send. So let's say I want to send, I think, three vendors every 10 minutes, 10 times. And then you decide whether you should be uh, uh, sorting those vendors through cost. So the cheapest is the one on the top that will receive the, uh, uh, receive the invitation first. Or maybe uh, should I go with the quality? So overall or specific, or specific uh, vendor evaluation. After defining those settings in the XTRF, this rule will be visible in here. And then you can select it in here. I, will, I think that in my case, I will just use one vendor every 10 minutes. As you can see, all the cascades are available in here. Of course, uh, as soon as the second cascade goes off, the, f the person, in that case, Tomasz, uh, will still have an access to the job offer. It doesn't prevent him from accepting it. It means that he has just now, he has now a competitor in the uh, case of Kate. So let's send those job offers. If you take a look into this uh, brick or this step, it has changed to green status, and we can see clearly how much time is left for the vendors to uh, finish all the cascades. To see to whom I have, I have sent the offers, maybe I've just do it too fast, and I want to double check to whom it was sent. I can easily press on the job offers and see who is the person that will receive this particular uh, job offer. So let me show you how the offer looks like from the vendor perspective and how the vendor portal looks like. So we are going back to my email. This is the email that will your vendor will receive. Again, here is just a short notification that there is a, some kind of job waiting for you. And please go ahead, open the link in which there will be much more information added. So let me open it and let me present it to you. As you can see right now, it is in Polish language. I will change it quickly to English and let me explain you why it is set up to Polish. Uh, so to uh, make the work in vendor portal or job uh, manager uh, really easy, we decided that uh, vendor portal language should switch to the, as long as the localization is available, to the language of the operating system of the vendor. In my case, this is the Polish Windows. Uh, uh, so my vendor portal was set to Polish. But of course, I can always change it. I take a look, I see the uh, received files, everything in here. All the files can be defined to uh, the way that I can share something with the vendor or I decided to hide it from this particular phase. For example, in that my case, I have TMs. Maybe I don't want to share it with them. I see the scope, so how many words are there? And of course, the overview of the job. So job type, languages, and the dates. So let's accept the offer. As you can see, right now, I can already start working in it uh, in, uh, in this job. Is that as soon as I press start, I'm, it's the first one, first serve, and already XTRF is changing the status of the project and job to start it. 
I can open this in MemoQ and translate it there. Of course, uh, I will want to keep it too long, but uh, this is the web trans feature that is available in the MemoQ integration. And then I can press finish the job and basically finish the project in my case. So let's go back to the project and let's see what has changed right after I've assigned the vendor and I finish the job as a vendor. Of course, again, I need to refresh because simply we are doing things too fast compared to the real scenario. Okay, so let's take a look. First of all, the project is closed, as you can see. Some fields are grayed out to make sure that the data is intact, the really important data so, uh, when it comes to the project management. Let's move forward, lower. Oh, we couldn't deliver any documents simply because we didn't translate them in MemoQ. This is the error because of the uh, rush manner we took uh, in that case. But of course, in the real case scenario, Tomasz would trans uh, translate the document in MemoQ and the delivery file will be here. And it would even be sent to the client automatically. Uh, all right. So. Uh, in that case, we can see that the total cost is clearly uh, ahead of the total agreed. Of course, this is probably because of the, the vendor had a little bit different uh, rate. But uh, this way, you can see uh, this is a little bit of an exaggeration. In that case, that the cost really is too too high compared to the total agreed. But you can see already you, you can see already what is the profit, what is the margin, what is the return of investment uh, in that particular case. Uh, because XDR doesn't only create receivables automatically, but it also creates payables. And as soon as vendors, a vendor is selected, it is uh, recalculating the rates per vendor price profile and is giving you the correct uh, cost of the project automatically. Of course, if you would have 10 vendors in the, pro in the project, it will calculate this automatically for every single one of them. So uh, you can pro probably already imagine how much time you could save uh, with just uh, this feature. After the closing of the project in XTRF, there is not much else left to do, except if you want to send the client satisfaction survey or evaluate the job of the vendors. And then what's left to do is invoice and wait for the money to come from clients and send the payment to the vendors. Uh, that's uh, basically all for me today. Um, if you will have any questions regarding the presentation that I just done, we will have time uh, at the end of the presentation and I'm giving floor back to Pascal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bartos. Thank you, Bartos. That was a nice presentation. So uh, guys, few things that we saw today. So basically we see the application, we see the smart project, very simple, very quick. You know, you just go down the page, fill up everything and it's there. One thing I didn't mention to you at the beginning is that we do have the module that you've seen, but we also have connectors. So today we didn't go on details, but we were connected to MemoQ. So this is how the system was able to calculate and do all the information, use the right TM. We're gonna do other webinars on that. So that's one part of the connectors. So we got connectors to CAT tools. So most all popular CAT tools we got connectors to. And at the end of the spectrum, we also have connectors to accounting tool, QuickBooks, Sage. So if you guys have any questions, any comments, what we will do, we will open the floor in one minute. For those of you that are leaving us, well, I want to thank you for your time, for your interest. Uh, please uh, stay tuned, look at our website. We will have other webinar. This was for beginners, so we will increase the, the difficulties of our webinar and we will look at uh, all the different functionalities that uh, XTRF can offer. On this, I will pass the floor to my colleague, Conrad. We will open the floor for questions. So once again, thank you for your time, your interest, and please use the chat to send us questions and we will be more than happy to answer you. For those of you that are interested to know more about the application or would want a one-on-one -on -one presentation, you could email me directly, pascal at xdrf.us. And for those of you that are actually clients of ours, you could contact your account manager and they will take care of you as well. So thank you for your time.